Hi, welcome back to Mel's Health. I'm Mel and as always it's lovely to have you here with me. Today I'm going to talk about the VQ scan. It's a scan that I had back at my six month review in November last year and quite recently I've seen a lot of people on the online forums I'm on such as Facebook and Reddit asking about the VQ scan either because they've been booked in for one and they don't know what to expect or they've seen it mentioned elsewhere and they just didn't know what it was so they're just asking about it. So this video I'm going to reflect back on my experience with the VQ scan but I'm also going to explain what it is and what to expect if you're booked in for one. I'm also lightly going to compare it to the CT scan because that one's very well known but I'm also going to do a separate video coming very soon just about the CT scan itself so it'll be easier to compare the two. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button. I'm bringing you weekly content around my recovery journey through pulmonary embolism, and I wanna share the information with as many people as possible because it really helps when you can find someone to relate to out there. Alongside what's happening in my life, I also produce these kinds of videos where it kind of gives you some educational information on things involved with PE recovery too. All right, so the VQ scan, what is it? It's a ventilation perfusion scan of the lungs and you'll find it in the nuclear medicine department. It involves two scans that are usually done one straight after the other, so it's just one procedure but there's two separate scans involved. One scan measures how well the air is able to flow through your lungs and the other shows where the blood is flowing through your lungs. The scan for the airflow just involves you inhaling a radioisotope tracer gas that's mixed with oxygen through a mouthpiece and then you're going to lay flat on the scanner bed while the machine kind of comes down on you and then the imaging will take place and the imaging will show the areas of your lungs that are either not getting enough air or holding too much. The scan for the blood flow involves you being injected with a radioactive tracer. So prior to being in the scanning room, an IV will be set up prior to this portion of the scan. And then the tracer is put into your IV, it will travel through your blood and therefore into your lungs. And then the images will show which areas of your lungs aren't getting enough blood. When I had my scan, I had the IV set up by a nurse before going in. And then about five minutes later, the technician came and collected me and then spoke to me about what I should expect. Firstly, I did a couple of inhales of the gas from what I remember, he told me to inhale, I think I held it for about three seconds and then exhaled. I then laid flat on the scanner bed with my arms above my head, which you do for most scans. And then the imaging part of the machine is lowered down on top of you and it does get into quite close proximity with you. So if you're claustrophobic, this is something to note before you go for this scan. It is quite a large piece of machinery that is lowered down very, very close to you. So you're in a very kind of tight space and you have to lie there very, very still for about 15 minutes. And you've got to do that twice because as in my case, I did the inhalation one, laid on the bed, had the machine move around me for 15 minutes. Then I came out of it. The tracer was injected into me and then I laid back on the bed, was in the machine and then the same thing again for another 15 minutes. So the whole process kind of from start to end was around about 45 minutes. So what were the results mean? In a VQ ratio, the V stands for ventilation, which is the air you breathe in. The oxygen, it goes into the alveoli, which are those tiny air sacs in our lungs, and then carbon dioxide exits. Q, on the other hand, means perfusion, and it comes from the word quantity, more like the volume of blood. So deoxygenated blood from your heart goes to the pulmonary capillaries, which are the tiny blood vessels. From there, carbon dioxide exits your blood through the alveoli, and then the oxygen is absorbed. The VQ ratio is the amount of air that reaches your alveoli divided by the amount of blood flowing in the capillaries in your lungs. When your lungs are functioning properly, about four liters of air enter your respiratory tract and five liters of blood go through your capillaries every minute. And that gives you a VQ ratio of 0.8. Any number that is higher or lower than that is gonna be a VQ mismatch. So what is a VQ mismatch? This happens when part of your lung receives oxygen without blood flow or blood flow without oxygen. And this will happen if you have an obstruction in your airway, such as a blood clot. There are also a bunch of conditions that can cause a VQ mismatch through affecting your body's ability to deliver enough oxygen to your blood, such as COPD, asthma, pneumonia, chronic bronchitis, and of course PE, and a few others. 
After my scan, I didn't actually get the numbered ratio result, so I can't tell you what mine actually was. Um, I was just told that all the clots that I had at my diagnosis six months prior were all still there, so obviously a mismatch. And at that point, I changed medications and had a new treatment plan. If you want to know more about that, then hit the subscribe button and you can see some of my previous videos where I talk more in depth about my personal experiences. So are there any risks? Surprisingly, there's actually significantly less radiation exposure with a VQ compared to a CT scan. The only things of main note when you look into it are potential bruising at the injection site and allergic reactions to the tracer substance. And from what I've read, the allergic reaction is really uncommon, um, but when it does happen, it's very easily treatable and all the staff have everything really close by to be able to deal with that if the situation occurs. Any preparation needed? Nothing of note, really. You don't need to fast or anything like that that you have to with some scans. Prior to the scan, the nurse will explain the possibility of that allergic reaction I just mentioned and ensure that you understand there's a risk. In regards to pregnancy, the scan can be done whilst pregnant if it is imperative to have a scan and it can't wait until after the birth. I think in a lot of cases, they'll do the VQ rather than a CT in this situation. And if you're post-pregnancy and you're breastfeeding, there are a lot of recommendations for women to express about two days worth of milk and then bottle feed for two days afterwards, um, just because radiation can pass through into breast milk. And that's a VQ scan in a nutshell. Depending on where you are, obviously the after process will differ, um, but the images generally get sent to a doctor to interpret them and compile a report and then get sent to your coordinating doctor to give you the feedback. Generally, the technician doesn't read the scans. I had a little chat with the technician when I came out of the scanner because I wanted to have a look at the images being compiled and just be a bit nosy as to what they looked like. So he let me see the screen about what he was putting together to send to the doctor. And uh, it was very clear that there was a blockage when I looked at my scans. An image was compiling and rather than having like the actual shape of two lungs, um, there was a big chunk missing out of one of the bottom of my lungs and I asked him if uh, he knew what that meant and he was just like, I'm not a professional, but I would say that's a blockage. <laughs> but in my case, I had an appointment arranged for the same day. So about an hour and a half after having this scan, we went to the thrombosis clinic and met with my doctor and she would therefore could tell me that I do have all the same clots that I had back in May last year, and that was when my treatment plan changed. So a VQ scan isn't an overly scary experience. It might be uncomfortable for you if you are claustrophobic. I would definitely communicate that to the technician before the scan, just in case you were prone to panicking. But otherwise, it was as straightforward as any other scan has ever been. They did say to me afterwards though, quite a funny fact, that if I was to go to an airport within a few days after having this scan, then I would need to tell someone because I would quite likely set the alarms off through the amount of radiation in me. Obviously during pandemic times, that's not something I need to worry about now, I'm not exactly flying anywhere, but I thought that was quite funny. I also think in general, not many doctors are ordering as many VQ scans these days. It's less common compared to getting a CT scan, especially with the contrast dye. I think that's just because that apparently CTs produce a bit of a sharper image, so it can make it a bit easier to detect any blockages or any issues with any of the surrounding tissues. But overall, I think they're both really good scans. Either one that you're booked in for, you're gonna get some good readings from it and it will help with your ongoing treatment. I hope this video was easy to understand and gave you some relevant information, especially if you're due to go for your first VQ scan sometime soon. I've put a bunch of links in the description below where you can read about the information itself from some medical websites that might give you a bit more reassurance. And I'll also follow this up with a video about CT scans that will come out very soon. Please hit the like button if you've learned anything from this video today and subscribe to my channel for more information coming at you weekly. Hopefully by next week, I'll have received my latest results. I'm still waiting on results from a recent CT scan and some blood work. So I'll be able to share all that with everybody. Um, if you haven't seen any of my previous videos or if you're not following my journey, I'm currently nine months out of being diagnosed with submassive pulmonary embolism. I'm just waiting for some results to come in to see if I've got any improvement, just because I'm still not feeling that much better, to be honest. But that's it for today. Come and join me on this journey if you're interested. All the support I get is greatly appreciated. 
and I'll see you again soon. Bye.